here at the Canabish Math and Science Center at the end of October, so you've guessed it, it is fall. The temperatures are getting chillier, the length of daylight is shortening, and some of our animals are acting just a little bit strange. When faced with environmental changes, our animals have to decide what behaviors give them the best chance of survival. What do they consider? Well, let's head on inside and we'll see if we can think it through. Animals need a few things in order to survive, the most obvious being food, but it can't be just any food. Some animals have bodies designed to eat only plants, called herbivores. Others are designed to eat other animals, like mice, fish, and rabbits. We call them carnivores. Some prefer to eat only insects, in which we call them insectivores, and others, like me, like to eat a little bit of everything, in which we call them omnivores. Given that, though, Animals need to first be concerned about whether or not they will be able to find food. The next thing that animals need in order to survive is to be the right temperature. We can split animals up into two groups based on temperature, cold-blooded and warm-blooded. A cold-blooded animal relies on the external temperatures to maintain their body temperature. Our reptiles, amphibians, fish, and insects all belong to that category. A warm-blooded animal has a body that works really hard to try and maintain a constant temperature. As humans, scientists estimate that our constant temperature is approximately 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now yours may be a little bit lower or a little bit higher, but your body is working really hard to keep it at a constant temperature. If you get sick, it may change, or if you're exposed to extreme periods of cold or heat, without the proper clothing, it may also change. But we do know that an animal will have to sometimes rely on body structures, safe shelters, and possibly each other to maintain that right temperature. And the last thing that animals need in order to survive is water. Some animals need a lot of water, like fish, so they can swim around and live in it. Others may only need a puddle to drink water from, and other animals eat foods that contain water like plants and nuts to fulfill their water needs. So given this new information, where does that leave our Canabush animals? Let's head outside and investigate. Back here at our swamp, we have lots of bullfrogs and painted turtles. So let's ask ourselves the three questions to see how they will survive this fall and winter. Number one, will they be able to find food? Our bullfrog and painted turtle would both love to eat some big, fat, juicy worms and probably some small fish. The painted turtle might add in some plants and the bullfrog might like some rodents and even smaller frogs. So do we see those in winter? Some of them, yes, but not all of them. So let's ask ourselves our next question. Number two, will they be able to be the right temperature? Well, they're both cold-blooded, meaning they rely on the outside temperature for their warmth. The temperature's decreasing, getting lower and lower. And although the turtle has a nice shell and the frog has thick skin, I don't think that's going to be enough to keep up their warmth. So what will they do? Absolutely, they hibernate. Maybe you watched our last video where the groundhog was hibernating. When an animal hibernates, it slows its body way, way down to save energy. They're not actually just sleeping. They lower their heart rate, they let their body temperature get colder than normal, and they don't move around. In order to make sure that that can happen, they must eat a lot of food all in the fall to save up until the temperatures get better and their food supply is stable. So our animals like snakes, frogs, toads, and turtles all hibernate, along with groundhogs, chipmunks, and skunks. You know, I think I hear another animal. Let's go see if we can find it. I knew I was hearing something. I've been seeing really large groups of birds flying around lately, like groups of 40 turkey vultures or over a hundred red-winged blackbirds. But what are they doing? You know, let's ask ourselves our three questions and see if that'll help us figure it out. So question number one, will they be able to find food? Our red-winged blackbirds love to eat grubs and caterpillars and occasionally small seeds. But do we find grubs and caterpillars here in the winter? Not at all. So if we pair that with the fact that it's colder temperatures and they probably won't be as comfortable, they're going to go someplace where it'll feel a little bit nicer. We call that migration, when one animal moves from one location to another location. And it's really easy for birds to migrate because they fly and they don't have to deal with traffic. But do all birds migrate? 
Not at all. Some birds prefer to eat only seeds, which can be found in nature or maybe even your neighbor's backyard bird feeder. Those birds like blue jays and cardinals will keep themselves warm by fluffing up their feathers and acting a little bit like a coat. So some of our birds who can't find what they want, like our red-winged blackbirds, our great blue herons, and our ducks are gonna get out of here and go south where they can find some nice warm temperatures and all of their favorite foods. Can you think of any other animals that might migrate? I can think of a beautiful one. It actually started making its journey down to Mexico earlier this month because its wings are so delicate. Have you guessed it? The monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly has very fragile wings that need warmth in order to work, and they love to drink nectar from flowers, none of which we have here in Michigan, so they migrate too. I've got one more place I wanna take you. Let's go. We were given a bunch of these black walnuts, so we decided to put them out on the trail. We then set a trail camera on it to see if we could figure out who would eat them. Do you know what we caught? The squirrel. So let's ask our questions about the squirrel. So number one, will the squirrel be able to find food this fall and winter? Well, the squirrels like nuts and seeds. And lucky for them, we just put out a bunch of walnuts. We have oak trees that make acorns, and we actually put out corn in the winter for our animals. So I think it's safe to say that they'll have plenty of food. We've actually caught some of our squirrels on camera, taking away all the outsides of the walnuts and then burying them in a safe place for later. So number two, will they be able to have the right body temperature? Well, I'm not gonna lie. There are going to be times where our squirrel is cold, but they will grow a thicker fur. They have their drays up in the trees where they can get out of those harsh winter winds and they're warm blooded. So their body should work to keep a nice constant temperature for them. So they're okay there. Number three, will they be able to find water? Before the pond freezes, they'll have the water in that. They will have snow and some of the foods that they eat have water inside it. So I think it's safe to say they're okay on that front too. So since we said yes to all three questions, that means they are not going to migrate. They will not hibernate and instead they will just stay and tough it out. Can you think of any other animals that do the same? You're right. Most of our warm-blooded animals will stay and tough it out with a few exceptions. Our deer, our beaver, our fox, our coyote, our mink, and our rabbits will all remain active in the winter. Now that doesn't mean that they don't eat a bunch of yummy food beforehand and build up their fat supplies, but their bodies will work really hard to keep them alive. Some winters are harder than others, and if the temperature stays too low for too long, they may be forced to snuggle with their family for warmth in a nice safe place out of the wind until those conditions pass. But think about it, we do the same thing. Some of us love winter, some of us not so much, but no matter what, we change our behavior so we can get through it. So let's put it all together. Animals need food, the right temperature, and water in order to survive. In Michigan, when the weather begins to change in fall and continue into winter, if they can't find those three things, they may have to change their behaviors. For those that are capable of flying, they could safely migrate to a warmer location with all of their favorite foods. But for those that can't fly or it would be unsafe to travel, they may have to hibernate, slowing their bodies down and conserving energy until conditions improve. And for others, like us, we just tough it out. Those animals may have to grow thicker coats, they may have to eat more when they have the opportunity, and possibly shelter in place with their families on the worst of days. But for all of our animals, we wish them the best of luck and hope that they all survive.